Hello and welcome back, and that is right, it is data news of the week. The video will go through all the different stories that involve data this week that we couldn't squeeze into any other video. First up, we're going to revisit the subject of 20TB. It's not even been a week. A week ago, 20TB was kind of this mythical thing in the horizon. All of a sudden, we've got two different stories in a week about it. We've already talked about Seagate this week, and now it's the turn of WD. WD's opt in and 20 TB hard drives look like they're going to be landing pretty imminently. Obviously, predominantly for data center use, but these are their newer kind of hard drive. Now, we have talked about Optinand in the past, but just a quick summary Optinand hard drives. Uh, from WD, these are much larger hard drives, helium sealed, that are taking advantage of energy assisted uh, PMR. So, uh, you know, the way they're utilizing the storage space and expanding and retracting um, areas of platter space. There, this is a nine platter hard drive. Each platter is going to have 2.2 terabytes on board and with an improved actuator. These are how um, WD are tackling 20 TB and larger on their roadmap to 50 TB within the decade. Now, um, the other thing to bear in mind with these, and probably the biggest selling point about them, other than that improved actuator and the energy-assisted magnetic recording technique, that vertical uh, writing, is that usage of that NAND. So using an area of flash there that's just going to be used for metadata there within the drive. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but there's a lot of wasted kind of space and reading time that goes into metadata. That's, you know, something as basic as indexing and protocol all the way down to when you have larger, huge libraries of information, which let's be honest, data centers are pretty guilty of. And having an area on this drive that takes care of that kind of data is gonna free things up substantially and in overall improve throughput. And they've already said how with this new kind of uh, fl NAND flash they're going to be utilizing here. This isn't the same as that hybrid technology we saw when it was a small piece of SSD in conjunction with hard drive. This is very much target led areas of more affordable flash on board with these drives, which meant that this larger area of storage is also going to offset and you know, a small degree of that storage that would have gone to this tiny kind of technically inconsequential but incredibly vital in terms of indexing data of uh, being moved over to the flash area. And again, this is highly data center. Let's be realistic. Whenever these do become available, consumers aren't really going to feel this for a very long time. It's going to be your data centers, your high end, high tier users that are really going to be capitalizing on these. They say this is going to kind of trickle down into the likes of their NAS series and stuff like that, but that is going to take time. But nonetheless, WD have turned around quite quickly on Optinand. It was something that really no one knew about outside of this deck, uh, outside of this year. And then suddenly, bang, it's being highly publicized by them for availability, at least again, to the top end within November. So now we can switch back over to Seagate. We've already talked about 20 TBs this week, but we can talk about something that was going on over at OCP this week, where they were demoing, or at least tech do it, demoing, NVMe interface hard drives. Now, before you go, what? It makes no sense. Uh, hear me out. Obviously, on paper, the idea of a hard drive with an NVMe interface seems wildly ridiculous. If you look at it in a now frame of mind, hard drives even available now in SaaS-based connectivity, it has to be said, are by no means saturating that connection. Now, if you look at the additional hard drives, even current gen hard drives um, you know, that are available in SAS and SATA really don't push higher than about 280. I think the highest is 282 megabytes per second we've seen. However, we are seeing things like the Mac 2 series with the dual actuator, uh, the arm there reading there. We've seen a lot more improvements, as mentioned earlier on, with that opt-in end. We're seeing the way technology is being written too, in terms of energy and heat-assisted magnetic recording and microwave magnetic recording as well. And all of these things are adding up to not only larger hard drive capacity, but the ability to read from them. Fast forward to the fact that a lot of Data center users are using NVMe or U2U3 interfaced servers, which although utilizing that large amount of storage there, um, uh, you know, at their disposal on the bulk scale, individual drives on, you know, super fast NVMe still aren't challenging the capacities or at least the price per terabyte that we see in hard drives. So the ability to interface hard drives into those systems as 
hard drive technology evolves and improves and breaks um, several times over what we expect hard drives to perform within. This actually makes a lot of sense long term. And also with the development of hard drives, if they keep developing the performance of hard drives, but yet are locked in to you know SATA and SAS, that's not going to do anyone any good when all of a sudden they present a bottleneck. Also, as long as you improve the storage enclosure, they were showing this off with a couple of JBOD uh, systems they had there. As long as you work within the confines of an improving enclosure and not limit those drives individually, I think they're going to see better results overall. So really, this is quite a mature step for them to be looking at. When you, you know, it's hopefully we're going to something we're going to see here at least within the next few years. But still, we've seen some great stuff from hard drive vendors at the end of 2021, right? Next up, let's return to the subject of PCIe Gen 5 SSDs. This is a subject that's growing very, very quick, especially given there's barely any PCIe Gen 5 SSD client hardware in the market right now. A uh, company we're going to talk about today, Fadu Technology, yes, me neither, um, they have developed and sh are showing off early uh, specifications and details on their PCIe Gen 5 times 4 M2 NVMe with a reported speed and so that isn't bandwidth this is speed of 14.6 gigabytes so that's 14,600 megabytes in read and in write 10.4 gigabytes so 10,400 megabytes per second this is pretty you know heavy going stuff for them to commit to there we're hoping to see more on this and again this uh, they even talked about some of the iops there with a frankly astounding 3.5 million 4k random iops in read reported there so again it's nice to see we're seeing examples and discussions on PCI Gen 5 SSDs, which hopefully will start to see dribbling into the uh, the you know the storage market within the next 12 months. Hopefully, as some of these motherboards arrive. But again, what I like is we're used to seeing the big guns, your, your WDs, your Seagates, and, and all of the background, your Microns and your Coaxa and companies like that. But it's really nice to see some of the other smaller brands or startup brands or ultimately that PCIe Gen 5 isn't just going to be a boys club and it's going to be lots of different brands out there and hopefully when this hits the ground that we're going to see a lot more tech available at launch and not just a few isolated brands that are going to hold on there obviously they're not able to show much on this they certainly weren't showing off much in the way of hardware concepts or kind of demos there but it's at least they're committing themselves to this early doors and it's going to be great to see if this fado uh, technology company is going to bring something meaningful forward into this storage tier Finally, let's end on a PS5 story. I don't know how many of you guys have heard about this. Um, a company, very well known one, Fail Overflow, have got their hands on the PS5 root keys. They've managed to break in and have access to them. They posted a bunch of stuff on Twitter and even detailed a little bit about how they did it. Um, Jallo and um, Fail Overflow have in the past cracked the PS3 and 4 to run Linux code and, you know, kind of their own homebrew applications there. This is kind of the first step steps towards uh, the PS5 being completely jailbroken. It's early days, it's by no means you know readily available at this stage, and they're not even the first people to do that in the last week or so. Um, Andy Nugan um, posted on Twitter, he is a Google engineer, and he posted that he got access to the debug settings on the PS5, getting into them in the current generation of firmware updates there. Now again, what does this mean long term? Well, a lot of people, let's be realistic about this, will one day move, you know, move this kind of development towards piracy. And unfortunately, it's things like that that really kind of hamper and make companies restrict things more and more to protect their IPs, understandably. But this, there's actually a lot more applications and things you can do on this. You've got this super fast, super powerful piece of tech in your home, and it's great to be able to do stuff with it rather than play closed system games. And I like it when we see a lot of um, users tinkering with the system to get more out of them than just simply games. So again, we will keep an eye on this, and maybe if something constructive comes from this, you know, before before Sony slams the firmware hammer down. But it looks like, according um, to File Overflow, that it's not going to be that straightforward. And they're, they're highlighting that it's not going to be a simple case of firmware updating here. This is very 
deep in how far they've had to get in and you'd have to change a lot of the structure of the system to get around that but we'll keep an eye on this for, for now this has been data news of the week as always click uh, the bell and the subscribe button there to stay abreast of all things news we've got some great stuff coming in the next week or so where we're going to talk about a lot of hardware that came out about a year year and a half ago and a number of you are still wondering is it worth going for it or sitting on the fence um or, and wait until something new comes along we're going to touch on that a lot and we've got some reviews coming up soon finally of the t4 series the team force ssds coming in the next seven days or so so stay tuned for that but otherwise i will see you next week